Hello, I'd like to go over a MATLAB program that I wrote a few years back that was for a biomedical signals class. This program is designed to convolve two signals together and it can be two signals of your choosing so long as it's a step, a ramp, a sinusoid, and exponential. I later expanded this program to be able to cross correlate as well. Before I go into the program too much, I just wanted to do a brief history and overview of what convolution is. So convolution and cross-correlation are closely related. The main difference between the two is that convolution takes two signals, an f of t and a g of t, and it then flips the g of t and multiplies the two signals together to produce some output. It slides one signal into another and integrates them. Cross-correlation, on the other hand, takes two signals and it just straight pushes them together and integrates them without the flip. I can do a little bit of a visual here in just a minute. <laughs> so for the math nerds out there, who want to learn more about this, the basic definition is you have two functions f of t and g of t and you're multiplying f times g of t and that's equal to the integral from negative infinity to infinity of f of tau times g of t minus tau with respect to tau. Applying this in a visual representation you have these two signals and you express each function each function in the term of some dummy variable tau and you can reflect one of the functions such that g of tau equals becomes g of negative tau so this function becomes flipped that function then is going to slide into the other function and then there'll be some output that is the two functions somewhat multiplied together so in these two examples, this is essentially what my program does, is it just in real time will take two signals and convolves them together. This particular example is an RC circuit, a resistor capacitor circuit. In the blue line, that's some capacitor charging and discharging. If we think about the red line, we can, or the square rather, if that was a Dirac delta function, which a Dirac delta function is, a function where at 0 it equals 1 and everywhere else it equals 0. So if it was just a line that was sliding through this blue function it would just equal the blue function but because we have this red square they're smearing at this front end and at the back end as well some overshoot there because the two functions are multiplied together and indeed this does not equal 1. So, my code itself I can run through with you. This is pretty straightforward at the front end. It just asks you for a bunch of choices to choose either a step, ramp, sinusoid, or exponential, and it just enters that and creates various equations or lines depending on what you choose. After it goes through this switch case, it then will add lines on either end. It will pad either ends with zeros and that allows you to back up one function on top of another. So in this particular example this line here will have this function will have zeros so that way you can back it up and then move it on to the other function and then there's at least some zero space for the integration to occur and it won't come up with null values here. This is just some plotting. I'd like to... plotting is just general, it's nothing to do much with the convolution program itself and nothing special to convolution so I will skip down to where the convolution actually happens and that would be right here. Um, I'm using, I'm actually doing the convolution twice. The first time is just to define the axis limits. That way I know on one particular axis, on this particular axis, I'm not going to know beforehand 
what the result is of the final function and in order to mediate that I run it once beforehand and then I take the final function and I add one and subtract one to have the final plot or table to be the max and min limits to match the max and min limits. For this function up here circ shift is very important so circ shift circularly shifts the back number of a particular array to the front and that's how I can to go back to my function that's how it pushes itself forward is the back number becomes the front number excuse me the front number becomes the back number and then because the zeros keep moving it just shifts forward for the visual loop the visual for loop that actually gives you the visual representation of convolution happening I just advance it through with a 0.1 increment and that just adds to itself and the convolution itself happens here I use the trap Z function and that's just trapezoidal integration and I'd like to do some examples now so the first one I'm going to do is a cross correlation and I'm going to start with a step with a width of 6 and a height of 4 and I'll make a positive polarity and I'm going to cross correlate that with a ramp with a width of 4 and a height of 3 and I'll go with a positive polarity and because this is cross correlated this has a positive slope here and we didn't have to mirror g of t then or excuse me g of tau um, and I put in an option to be able to view it in a larger plot and here you can see the output let's try this again with some convolution and here's the original function I'm going to start off the same way step with a width of 6 and a height of 4 positive polarity and a ramp with a width of 4 and height of 3 and I'll do positive polarity for that as well now this time this has a negative polarity because it got mirrored because we're doing convolution you can see the zeros padded if this was if this green line wasn't here it would be red and that's the tails to allow me to be able to slide one function into another nicely Let's see it gradually start up because we're gradually going and then it reaches a max once this peak hits this peak and likewise the sharp edges only happen when you get the peaks together I will view that again alright this time I'm going to do convolution with a sinusoid and a ramp so I'm going to convolve a ramp with a width of 3 and a height of negative 7 and we'll go with negative polarity of the slope and I'll use a sinusoid we're going to use sine I give the option of degrees or radians I like radians personally it's a little bit more intuitive and the amplitude can be 3 positive polarity of that and the upper limit in other words the width from 0 to whatever point can be 5 and let's go with 2 t plus 1 alright this is a little bit different now
certainly not as intuitive as before as far as the output goes. And it's going to be flipped since you have a negative times a positive, just like anything that you multiply by a negative, it's going to make it negative or it's going to flip the polarity. All right, and we're going to do two more examples here. The next one, I'd like to do cross-correlation of a sinusoid with an exponential. It'll be a cosine radians. We'll go for cosine 4t. I'll make the upper limit 6. The upper limit is just from 0 to whatever point out on the graph that you'd like. And 4 times t with an exponential. For this example, we'll go 0.5 the upper limit I'll make is 5 and the decay constant can be 2 times t divided by 3. This will be an interesting output this time. You imagine on the back end it's going to have a really low negative and then slowly come up. Still not very intuitive as to why that would happen but a positive times negative would be equaling a negative and so that's why that occurs. All right, one more. We'll go con convolution of the same thing that we just did. 4 cosine 4t. Four, 4. Our upper limit was 6. 4 times t. We'll do that with an exponential. 0.5 positive. Make the upper limit 5. And the decay constant we'll make again 2 times t divided by 3. Now it's just the same thing except the opposite way. And convolution cross-correlation have all sorts of useful applications in medical imaging, for example. Convolutions used quite often in order to do CT scans. In radar signatures, you can use cross-correlation to match a certain radar signature of an aircraft to whatever's on your screen. In just standard imaging, it can be useful as well. I'll view this in a another plot there. So I really appreciate you watching my video. Thank you for taking a look at my code and I wish you all the best till next time. Thank you.